boyfriend thinks I'm disgusting for having periods and refuses to touch me or even have sexy time. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My boyfriend and I have only been dating for three months. We met on a dating app. He works in financing and I own my own business. He's 28 and I'm 22, but he is so not mature. When we first met, he came across as a really intelligent guy. After six dates, he asked me if I wanted to be his girlfriend and I said yes. I did feel like he was rushing into it a little bit, but I decided to take the risk. A few days after he asked me to be his girlfriend, I mentioned to him that I was going to get off the pill. I was having a lot of hormonal problems and the pill was probably causing it. And I knew that this was going to make my periods really heavy again. Well, when I said this to him, he said, wow, that's disgusting. Then he said, my ex never had periods because she was always on the pill. Um, isn't that impossible? He was just lying to make me feel bad. And I literally sat there in the restaurant explaining to him why periods happen and why they are important. By the end of the conversation, he said it was still gross and that he wouldn't want to touch me when I was on it in case he got blood on him. Then he brought up his ex again. He said that she was always so clean. I got up from the table and I walked away. Part two is up. My boyfriend told me I'm disgusting for getting my period and he refuses to touch me. Disclaimers is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. The following day, he called me and asked me if I still had my period. I told him no and he said, okay, then I can come over. When he came over to my apartment, I asked him what was his problem with periods. He told me that it was disgusting and that women should try to get rid of them. Then he started insisting on me taking the pill again so that I could stop having periods. I told him he had no right over my body and that I would do whatever I wanted. He ended up going home and we didn't speak for a few days. He finally calls me and tells me that he's sorry for calling me disgusting. <sighs> but this time I actually had my period. So when he came over, I wanted to test him. I kissed him and told him that I wanted to do it. Then he said, okay. I told him I had to go to the bathroom to remove my pad. Then he said, are you for real? That's so gross. Why would you invite me over knowing that you have your period? Then he said that he wouldn't come near me with a 10 foot pole. Yeah, this 28 year old man said that. Then he told me that I probably smell really bad down there and that I should probably go take a shower right away. I didn't even know what to say to him. I opened my front door and I stood there and he left. An hour later, he posts on his story that he's at a club with his friends. Part three is up. My boyfriend says that I'm disgusting for getting periods and he refuses to touch me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. He posted a story that he was at a club. I decided to give him the benefit of the doubt. So I didn't ask him anything. A few hours later, I check his story again and he's partying with all these random girls at the club. I asked him who they were and he said they were just girls that he met at the club. I was so angry, I just turned off my phone. At two in the morning, he shows up to my apartment drunk. He actually apologized, but ended up falling asleep on my couch. The next day, I thanked him for apologizing and he said, what apology? I said, you came over last night and apologized. He said, no, I didn't. I I would never have done that. I still think your periods are gross. I started to cry and he told me that I was overreacting. For the past three months, it's been like this. Every time I'm on my period, he refuses to even hang out with me. I told him a few weeks ago that I needed him to change because I needed his support when I had my period. He told me that he just couldn't do it. So I took to Instagram and got in contact with his ex. And I asked her if it was really true that she never got periods. She told me no, that it wasn't true and that he was just disgusted with periods in general. She told me that I shouldn't take it personally and that he also made her life a living hell whenever she got her period. Then she told me that he cheated on her several times when she had her period. Apparently it was just like a hall pass for him. So now I'm thinking about breaking up with him. When I'm not on my periods, we have a great time. But I want someone who will love me and support me no matter what. What should I do? Am I wrong for ruining my sister-in-law's gender reveal? So I, 31 male, have three beautiful daughters, seven, five, and two, which for some reason people in my life think I'm not completely happy with. If I had a dollar for every time I heard, I bet you wish you had a son, or are you ever going to try again for a boy? I'd be a millionaire. Look, if my wife got pregnant again and had a boy, my reaction would be the same as the other three. In my opinion, as long as your child is healthy, who honestly cares? props to this dad. I never hear guys talk like this. It's so refreshing to hear. The worst and most annoying people towards my wife, give me a son, are my sister-in-law, 29, who has four boys and now pregnant with her fifth child, and my mother-in-law. Last Sunday, we were at my mother-in-law's for Sunday lunch, and my sister-in-law said after dessert to come out to the back garden as they had a balloon to announce the gender of their new baby. Well, long story short, she's having another boy. After everyone congratulated her, she made her way to us and said, I bet you wish just once it would be blue for you guys, then turned to my wife and said, it's never too late to try again. It royally pissed me off because my oldest was in earshot. I turned to her and said, Well, actually, Alice, I wouldn't give one of my daughters dirty socks for what boys were in Europe, and the fact that you base your love on your child's gender says a lot about you as a mother. I don't need a son, so I suggest you take your advice and stick it. She stuttered for a second and then burst into tears, saying I was putting her and her kids down. The mood was ruined, and after that, we left. Since then, my in-law said she deserves an apology, and it's been a long-running joke, so I shouldn't have driven my sister-in-law to tears. Wait, what is it called? Can't take what you... Eat what you dish, can't take what you dish. I can't remember this thing. Story time about how my husband died and his best friend won't leave me alone. Disclaimer is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. My husband and I were married for almost a decade. During that time, we had two kids. And of course, his passing was completely devastating to our families. And two weeks after my husband died, I was still grieving. But his best friend started coming around our house a lot. First, he was very emotional. Him and my husband were best friends for about seven years. They saw each other almost every day. Not only did they work together, but they also would go to the gym together and pretty much hang out all the time. So I know this guy really, really well. When my husband would invite him over, I never got the feeling that he liked me. 
I mean, sure, sometimes I caught him staring at me, but I'm beautiful, so I understand. So after my husband passed, he started coming over as in, I want to take care of you, and we would just kind of cry together. I took this as his way of trying to help my husband, you know, so I just thought he was being really sweet. But exactly one month after my husband passed away, he started asking me weird questions. Number one, do you want to start dating again? Number two, don't you feel lonely at night? Number three, you're still so young and beautiful. You need to give yourself a chance with someone else. Mind you, I'm still grieving. To these questions, I would usually say no. Obviously, I mean, why would I even be thinking about those things? I didn't put too much mind to the questions, but a few days later, he came over after he had been at a bar. As soon as I opened the door to him, he said, can I kiss you? And then he did without me saying yes. Part story time about how my dead husband's best friend won't leave me alone. Disclaimer is not my story time with sending me an Instagram. As soon as I opened the door, he asked me if he could kiss me and I didn't say anything. And he grabbed me and just started kissing me. Of course, I pushed him away and told him that he needed to leave. That's when he said, but you didn't say no. I told him I didn't say anything because I was shocked he would even ask me that. That's when he walked into the house without me inviting him, went straight to the fridge and opened up a beer. Then he starts yelling at me for giving him mixed signals. He says that since my husband died, all I've been doing is flirting with him. Since when is grieving flirting? I told him that he was completely wrong and that he needed to leave again. Then he said, no, I'm not leaving here until you tell me the truth. That I was secretly in love with him and that I actually wanted to be with him. No, this wasn't funny to me at all. He was slurring his words and barely could stand up. I knew my kids were upstairs, so all I wanted to do was get him out of the house. That's when I grabbed my phone and started texting one of my other husband's best friends. I texted him, 911, please come to our house now. He responded right away saying, I'm coming over. After another minute of this guy ranting at me, I told him I was sorry for giving him mixed signals and that that was never my intention, blah, blah, blah. Then he asked me out on a date. He said that he wanted to take me out and show me a good time. I said no, and I asked him to leave again, but he wouldn't. Finally, someone knocks on the door. Part three is... Story time about how my dead husband's best friend won't leave me alone. Disclaimer is not my story time and send me on Instagram. That's when he asked me out on a date and started walking closer to me. Finally, someone knocked on the door and it was my other husband's friend who I texted to come help me. I ran over to the door quickly and I opened it. That's when my husband's best friend who was drunk in my house asking me out on a date, forcing me to kiss him, tells the other guy that he needs to leave. So I asked the other friend if he could just take this guy home. He said, yeah, of course. And he told him, you're drunk. I'm going to take you home now. They left together without incident and I was really relieved. But after that, I knew to watch my back now. So here's what happened. He started texting me every now and then asking me if I wanted to go to dinner and I would not even respond to him and after that he started showing up to different places I was at for example I go to Pilates classes five times a week this place is near my house and one day he just showed up trying to take a class as soon as I saw him I told the instructor and they kicked him out that's when he came back and said that he did nothing wrong and that he deserved to be in the class too he even paid the year up front so they had no choice but to let him in instead I left then he followed me outside to the parking lot and told me that I needed to relax he said it's not like I'm following you which he clearly was I got in my car and left that very same night he sends me a message apologizing for acting crazy then he told me that all he wanted was just to be close to me and the kids by the way my kids really do love him they ask about him all the time since he stopped coming over and i don't even know what to tell them after a few weeks of him not acting crazy he asked me if he could come over and i said yes decided to invite all my husband's friends and we had a nice dinner but again this guy asked me out he said no but my best friend thinks i should give him a shot he's good looking and rich what do you guys think my best friend almost killed my son so i met this girl in high school freshman year let's call her rose rose was outgoing fun and goofy we were nerds at the time, but grew up by freshman years. There was no issues with her at all whatsoever. No red flags. The only problem in my life though, and throughout a majority of my life, was that I lived in a toxic household. My father used to be on me, and my mother used to emotionally manipulate me. And then my mother would sit here and really have the nerve to complain when I wouldn't spend time with her. And then when I tried to explain why I wouldn't, she would just sit here and emotionally abuse me again. So one day I started showing symptoms of pregnancy and I went and got tested and it turns out I was six weeks pregnant. I had a boyfriend at the time, so I informed him. He told me he wanted no part in this. I was devastated and distraught and heartbroken, not to mention. Not only did he never actually love me, but he also abandoned his soon-to-be child. So my best friend brought up the idea of living together. My gut was telling me something was off about this idea, but I knew her for four years and I knew she wouldn't do anything bad. So we got our apartment and you will not believe what happened next. Come back for part two. We rented out a two-bedroom apartment and everything was fine at first. She forgot to do a couple of chores, but after reminding her, she did it. So one day she got a girlfriend and everything was fine. But she started to park in my parking spot. She used to eat our food and sometimes my food and she would leave the bathroom a mess by missing the trash can and leaving the floor wet during showers. She even went through my personal belongings at one point drunk thinking it was Rose's room. I told Rose about this problem and she apologized and said she'd talk to her girlfriend about it and tell her to stop. Which her girlfriend did stop for a period of time. I ended up having the baby. I remember on the way there, I asked Rose to bring me, but she was complaining because her and her girlfriend were watching a movie. That was the first red flag for me. So then as time progressed, I was raising my son and everyone loved him, but she was complaining about the noise and him crying, so she helped me soundproof my room. So my baby was sleeping and I was going to go to the grocery store, which was like a block away. So I left him there, I put the monitor up in case anything happened, and I left to the grocery store. And when I came back from grocery shopping, you will not believe what happens next. Come back for part three.
I came back to the apartment and it felt like it was a hundred degrees inside the house. It was so hot that I experienced a whiplash of hot air. I could barely breathe. It was so muggy. I was wondering why the AC was off and then I realized my son was home. I ran to him and he was slightly unconscious. I tapped his face a couple of times and then he started crying. I ran to the car and blasted the AC. I gave him some of my milk and luckily he was okay. He fell asleep in the car seat. I was so mad. Then I saw Rose pull up with her freaking girlfriend. I got up and I confronted her. I asked her why she turned off the AC and I told her she could have killed my kid, literally. She just brushed it off and said the bill was getting too high. She also told me I shouldn't be worried or mad about it because my baby was okay and alive. I was so mad, I just literally went upstairs and I started packing my stuff. As I was packing my stuff midway, she grabbed some of my stuff. I literally had to pepper spray her to get her out of my room. I ended up staying at a hotel for about six months. Now I live in an apartment alone with my baby. Luckily, I'm financially stable. You don't really know a person until you live with them. Follow for more story times. Forced to make drugs without knowing at eight years old. It was my eighth birthday in August and I invited all the neighbors over and their kids. Since I was the new girl and just moved into town, I invited the adults from my mom and dad to socialize with. We had a pool party and it was fairy themed. The boys and girls had wings on for the night and some girls had fairy bathing suits. I obviously looked the best though. So there was this one adult, let's call him Bobby. Bobby was nice, he had two twin daughters who were rich and we all wanted to be friends with them. Sometimes he would sit and chat with us telling us stories for one hour at a time. We would even play tag with him because he was down. Everyone thought this was nice and even some adults found this attractive as he was a single dad. Nobody suspected him of anything bad. So, after the party, all kids left and I managed to befriend everybody. One day, three boys and two girls came to my house inviting me to play with them. I agreed. We all ended up playing tag, but then Bobby told us to come over and to play in his backyard. We asked our parents and they agreed. The twins were there too. They had an amazing yard. Blow house, pool, grill, and fridge area. So while we were playing, Bobby said he had something cool to show us and to come into the basement. You will not believe what happened next. Come back for part two. They asked us to go to the basement and it was the type of door that you opened up and walked down into with a bunch of stairs. The door was built outside of his house as well. So we ended up following him because we trusted him. We were then in a red room with a bunch of grown men putting a white substance into bags, a bunch of plants on the side as well, and it smelled like weed and something salty. So he told us that he'd give us candy if we helped him pack the salt looking stuff into the bags. We said yay and agreed. He smiled and then began doing the same thing. While we were packing bags, I saw one of my friends getting their shoulders rubbed by a weird man. She said to stop, but he lured her into a room with candy and locked the door. I don't know what happened after that. We finished packing the bags an hour later. We said we were done and he gave us candy. We went back up to play in the yard and the little girl came out of the basement and played with us as well. But she had a bruise on her leg and arm. I don't know why she did, but we didn't bother asking. We just continued to play. After that, we all went home and everything was fine. The next day, there were flyers from one of our friends going missing. It was the same girl with the bruised arm and leg. I saw her go home, so when the police questioned me, I said she went home. Then the cops pulled up at Bobby's house and you won't believe what happened next. Come back for part three. I'm pregnant by a 35 year old at 15. So it was my sophomore year of high school and some kids my age wanted to be on Tinder. I was a little popular, not going to lie. So I usually followed in what the other kids wanted to do. I liked older guys, not guys my age because they were so immature. I'd usually date guys around 17, sometimes even 18, but we wouldn't have sex or anything like that. So I downloaded Tinder and put my best photos out there, including a bikini pic. And some guy, let's call him Joseph. Joseph was cute, he had a pretty lean body, a little bit of a beard, beautifully done eyebrows, and he was tall. I was 5'1", so I didn't have to worry about guys like I'm ahead or not. But I do prefer boys at least 5'11". The guy swiped on me a message, hey cutie, you look so hot in that bikini. His age was 19, a little old for me, but I didn't think it was all that different. I responded thanking him, and we started flirting. So he made a deal with me asking for me to be his girlfriend, and if I accepted, he would buy me gifts weekly, give me money, all that jazz. I was looking for a partner, not so much a sugar daddy, so I asked if he would be loyal to me and only me, and he agreed. He was perfect. I was a pretty materialistic person, so I loved buying things at the time, so I thought this was a once-in-a-lifetime chance. So I responded with, come back for part two. I agreed. We kept flirting, we didn't really sex at all, and he asked me if we could go on a date to New York City. I lived all the way in Georgia, but he was willing to buy a flight for me, and if I didn't feel safe, I could bring a friend along. I asked my friend Samantha to come, and she said yeah, as long as he gave her money as well. He said he'd buy anything we wanted for us, and we were both thrilled. I told my mom I was going on a vacay to New York City with Samantha's mom, and she said okay. I typically go on vacations a lot with Samantha, so that's why my mom didn't bother talking to her mom and stuff. We got on the plane and went to New York City. He met me at the airport, and he gave me the biggest hug, and we kissed. He smelled like cigarettes and cologne. My young self thought that was attractive at the time. Looking back at that now should have been a red flag because nobody uses cigars anymore. So he took us to this fancy restaurant first and we ate. Then he took me out shopping to the mall. I bought 20 pairs of underwears and bras from Victoria's Secret and my friend only got underwear since her boobs were too big. He bought me perfume and lip glosses and extra. He took me to American Eagle, Hollister, Forever 21, all these stores and I was so happy. Then at the end of the night we went to a hotel. He ended up getting my friend a separate hotel room and just one for us. And you will not believe what happened next. Come back for part three.
I'm a little uncomfortable by this idea, but I just rolled with it. It was a beautiful hotel. There was even a pool area. We swam in it for a bit, then I said I was too tired and we went to our hotel area. He took me to our room and he started being flirty. Then one thing led to another and we ended up doing it without protection. I told him I was scared to not use protection, but he showed me paperwork of him getting tested the same day of him being clean and then I agreed. Then I went back home and everything was fine. One day he messaged me and he told me he was really 35 instead of 18. I told him I was 15 and he immediately blocked me. I ended up crying because I wanted him to continue to buy me stuff. A month later, my stomach grew bigger, just by a little bit, and I started puking and stuff. I was 16 at this time because I just turned it two weeks ago. I told my friend Samantha and she thought I might be pregnant. She told me to get a test, took it with her, and it was positive. My mom asked me why I was puking so much, but I just gave her some weird excuse like I ate something bad with Samantha. So we scheduled for an abortion, and it's this weekend. Should I go through with it? I'm not sure. I don't really want to carry a child or ruin my body. Give some advice in the comments down below. Follow for more story times. He exposed my photos to the whole school. So I was 14 years old around this time, mind you, and a freshman in high school. My parents were pretty strict about dating and never gave me advice about them or what to avoid. I never knew what manipulation was, gaslighting was, grooming, etc. So back to the story. I remember being in lunch, sitting with my group of gals, and a couple of guys came up to us. They just flirted with the other girls on my tables because they were interested with them. I just sat there because I, I didn't know anything about dating. So then this one guy came and sat next to me and said, feel weird, right? I agreed and we laughed. We actually talked and had a pretty great time. After that, we exchanged numbers and continued talking. Me and him grew pretty close over time. I would even say we were close friends. I'm pretty sure he flirted with me at times, but I didn't know. We exchanged secrets. We vented to each other. We were almost best friends. We basically told each other everything. Then one day, out of nowhere, he asked, can you send some photos? I asked him, what photos? And he said, blank photos. He said he'd send some too, because this is what friends do, to feel more connected. I didn't want to, and you will not believe what happened next. Come back for part two. So we asked for blank photos and he told me friends usually send each other these photos to feel more connected. He told me he would feel sad and not connected with me enough if I didn't send these photos. This was the first time that I had a genuine friend in a long time and I didn't want to lose him, so I caved in. I took everything off and I sent the photos. He sent some back. I didn't really react. He asked me how I felt about it and I just told him I didn't really have a reaction. And he said, oh. He said he liked my body a lot though. So the next day, I ended up going to school and everybody was staring at me. I was wondering what the heck was going on. I talked to my friends and they told me I was disgusting. I asked them what I did wrong. It turns out that Michael had spread around the photos that I sent him without my consent. I was so upset and I didn't really know what to do. I talked to one of my trusted health teachers and they ended up telling me to report this to the principal. So that's what I did. He ended up getting arrested since he was 18. Yes, in this instance, I got justice. But many people suffer and don't get justice. Don't send photos when pressured. Moral of the story because you'll really regret it. Follow for more story times and follow my Instagram as well. Put my period blood and poop in her food because she was racist and homophobic. So I was in middle school and there was this girl, let's call her Isabella. Isabella was disruptive and one of the mean popular girls. I was pretty so she was always nice to me but not to others. I was quiet and kept to myself so I didn't really have a lot of friends. One day me and her were talking and she said the n-word comfortably. She said that a black girl in our class looked like a monkey and said sis is bald because she wears lace fronts all the time. She also said her lesbian friend is in love with her and it's disgusting and that she was definitely burning in hell. I didn't say anything but I didn't agree either. It made me extremely uncomfortable because I have friends who are black and I'm also a part of the LGBTQ plus community and I have friends that are part of the LGBTQ plus community. So I came up with the perfect plan. I was going to invite her over to my house, get a couple of her secrets to spread around, and feed her something disgusting. So I ended up inviting her over to my house on Friday using the excuse I wanted to get to know her better. And she came an hour late. How rude. I heard the doorbell ring and you will not believe what happened next. Come back for part two. She ended up coming an hour late, which was annoying, but she said hi and brought some macaroni and cheese for later. It looks pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. So we decided to watch a movie in my room. It was on Netflix. She pointed out basically every single person of color and had a slur for them. I was so irritated. There was this one gay character too, and she said he was the F slur, and he was going to rot in hell, and how disgusting and abnormal he was. I just looked at her irritated. So after that, we started talking, and I got some secrets out of her. She told me she stole 500 from her mom and posed it on her brother. She told me she killed her cousin's goldfish one time out of spite. And she told me she was the one who spread rumors of her best friend being a slut. I asked for a zodiac sign and she was a Gemini. She was just horrible. So I told her to stay upstairs while I make her dish. I decided poop and pure blood would be perfect for this. So while I was making her sauce for the tacos, I squeezed my tampon in her sauce. <laughs> this next part. And I stuck my finger up her butt and swirled it in her sauce. I'm sorry, I can't. After that, I set up her plate and called it downstairs. She said the food looked good and you will not believe what happened next. Come back for part three. I ended up mixing all that disgusting stuff in her food and I called her down to eat. She said that the food looked good but the presentation could be better. I just gave her a smirk and said, yeah, you're totally right. So she sat down and I watched her eat the food. It was so funny and it was so satisfying. 
I ate some of her macaroni and cheese and I'm not going to sit here in front. That, that shit was good. So after that, we talked some more. I didn't get any secrets out of her, but it was fine. I was satisfied. She left and the next day at school, she wasn't there. A week later, she came back and she explained her liver almost killed her. She said that my food practically poisoned her, but the doctors don't know why. I apologized, but I wasn't really sorry. Then I waited until a week and I ended up exposing her secrets to the entire school. Nobody expected me to know so much or to even be a gossiper, but people were down with it. She ended up getting kicked out of the clique because her best friend now knows it was her who spread the rumors. And nobody likes her. And she's a loner. Karma's a bitch, for sure. Follow for more story times and follow my Instagram as well. Check the links in my bio. She didn't want to have an abortion, so I made her. I was in the perfect relationship. I was dating this beautiful blonde girl with blue eyes, a perfect body, and gorgeous voice. Her name was Sabrina. She was basically everything a guy dreamed of. My bros respected me for it, too. I was happy with the way the relationship was, honestly speaking. I was never fond of kids. They were so gross and dirty. So much bacteria and bodily fluids out of control. I wanted nothing to do with it, and they were so noisy. I didn't have the patience. So me and Sabrina had a usual breakfast every single morning. One day, she said, what do you think about having kids? I felt disgusted by this idea. Why would she bring up such a thing? I told her I didn't have an opinion on it and i've never thought about having kids she nodded and continued eating her breakfast i really hope she wasn't thinking about having kids so i wished her goodbye with a kiss on the forehead and went on my way to work as i was packing boxes in my job she texted me saying she had a surprise for me she showed me a cute little gift bag i was excited because i love gift giving me and her did it regularly out of nowhere so i went home and she gave me the bag excited i looked inside the bag and you will not believe what happened next come back for part two when I got home, she hugged me and said, surprise, and gave me the gift bag. I pulled out a baby onesie and looked confused. Then when I looked in the rest of the bag, it was a pregnancy test that was positive. She was jumping for joy and screaming in excitement. I was really annoyed by this, but instead I congratulated her and gave her a hug and a kiss and I was excited. I really wasn't. I lied out of respect because I didn't want her to feel bad. I told her I was excited as well and we shared a kiss. I was okay with the idea at first. I didn't really mind. I didn't really feel anything about it. But then over time... I started to feel disgusted by the idea and highly annoyed. I wasn't really sure what to do. So I ended up venting to Reddit and they told me to leave her, which I didn't want to do. Then someone commented I could do a mixture that forces her to miscarry. I wasn't opposed to this idea. So then the person left their number, I got in contact with them and I met them in an alleyway. They ended up giving me one pill. They said only one pill because anything more than that could kill her. So I ended up making dinner for her and used the excuse that she was pregnant and wanted to do something nice. I mixed it in with her food and served it to her. She ate it and said it was good, but then she started to feel dizzy and her face became green and you will not believe what happened next. Come back for part three. I felt dizzy and I asked her if she needed to go to the bed and she said yes. Her face was turning green as well. I laid her on the bed and she started shaking. She continued shaking and then I realized she was having a seizure. I was freaking out because I didn't realize the pill would do this. I still cared about her. So I flipped her over on the side just in case she foamed at the mouth. I didn't want her to suffocate to death. I called 911 and an ambulance came and picked her up. I was scared, honestly speaking. I didn't want to lose her. They ended up taking extremely good care of her and gave her a couple of tests. They came back and said they didn't know what the cause was. It really was untraceable. After that, they said they needed to perform an emergency C-section to remove the dead baby. She ended up crying and I ended up crying as well, but I was kind of happy that she wasn't pregnant anymore. So she ended up having it and she was able to return six hours later. It's been about a year now and she said she wanted to try again for a baby. Again, I'm still in the middle and I don't have a reaction to it. I'm sad submitting this story and I'm not sure what to do. She said she wanted to try for kids again in the future. Should I tell her the truth and break up with her or should I tell her I don't want kids? Follow for more story times and follow my Instagram as well. Their dog killed my dog, so I killed theirs. So I had just gotten a puppy. It was a small Pomeranian. It was white and it was the cutest thing ever. Me and her immediately bonded. Her name was Miffy. I thought it was adorable and perfect for her. One day, I went on my walk like I usually did and I saw this blue nosed pit bull walking towards us. I thought it was friendly, so I smiled. Miffy walked towards it and barked once, like a friendly bark, because Miffy was a friendly good dog. Then I blinked and the next thing you know, the dog had its teeth around its neck. I tried to separate the dog from my dog, but it wouldn't let go. My dog was screaming in pain so loud that it hurt my ears. I started screaming for help, yelling for somebody to get their dog. A kid came by and commanded the dog to let go. And it did. Miffy was so weak, her eyes were watery, and she was barely breathing. I started crying and ran back home. I told my mom what happened and she immediately drove us to the vet, begging for services. They took her in and examined her in a separate room. Me and my mom started arguing. She asked me what I was doing the entire time and I told her I had my eyes on Miffy. Then we stopped arguing as the doctor came in. The doctor gave us our results and you will not believe what happened next. Come back for part two. The doctors came back in and told us that she was in pain and dying slowly and that it would be best to put her down. I started breaking down. I only had her for a month, but I was so in love with her. She was practically like my child. So I went into the other room, said my goodbyes, and they put her down. I held a mini funeral for her and everything. My mom asked me if I wanted to sue them, but I told her I had a better idea. So I decided to befriend the dog owner and give it a taste of my karma. So I made cookies for the boy. They were shaped like Miffy. 
and I gave them to him. I said this was a peace offering and said I was okay and that I forgave him. We were 12 at the time, so obviously he was going to be gullible. I befriended him and we became close over time. We liked a lot of the same things and we had a lot in common. We also had a compatible zodiac signs. I was a Pisces and he was a Cancer. I'm not gonna lie, I began to feel bad and I thought maybe I shouldn't do this, but I wanted justice for Miffy. So one day I was walking down the block by myself and I saw his dog. This was my chance. I held out a treat and lured the dog into my bedroom. And I started making the secret recipe for revenge. You will not believe what happened next. Come back for part three. I was going on my usual walk and I ended up seeing his dog. So this was finally my perfect chance. I took out a treat from my pocket and I lured him into my house. My mom and dad weren't home so this was the perfect time for my plan. I ended up leading the dog all the way upstairs to my bedroom, gave him a treat and locked him in the bedroom. And I ended up making my little concoction in the kitchen. I mixed together chocolate, rat poisoning, cleaner, and more dog treats. I ended up putting it in a little bowl. I brought it up to my bedroom, put it in front of him, and locked the bedroom door. After that, I went to the living room and I watched TV for an hour. I felt really bad for what I did, but I had a revenge mentality and wanted to avenge Miffy. So after that, I went up to my bedroom and ended up puking and crapping everywhere. So I cleaned that up, put some gloves on, put the dog in a trash bag, and left it in his backyard. The next day, I ended up calling the dog owner. And I asked him if he wanted to hang out since we were friends now. He said no. I asked him why. He said he went through stuff. And I said okay. We are still friends to this day and he doesn't know it was me. Follow for more story times. My coach touched me, harassed me, and groomed me. And I never got justice. So I was about 12 years old at the time. My school was in Texas so sex education wasn't really prevalent back then even though we were in middle school. Me and my friends wanted to join the cheer squad for our local football team, and we did. We auditioned and got in. But for whatever reason, the coach was just staring at me weird, looking me up and down. So the day of practice, I came and met the other girls. They seemed friendly, so I would get along with them. So one day, I was trying to do a backflip, and I couldn't and kept falling, so the coach helped me. No one else was watching because they were doing something else, so the coach told me to do a couple of stretches. I did the knee-to-chest stretch, and while she was helping me move my knee farther up, she touched my butt. I looked at her, and she was just looking at it. She said sorry and that I had something there, and I said it was fine. After that, she helped me do the backflip. She held my back and touched my chest for a mid-second while I was flipping. After six tries, I managed to do the flip. So after that, I went home and I felt weird about it, but I didn't tell anyone anything. So the next day at practice, she kept staring at me weirdly and told me to stay after practice because I was lacking in some skills. I told her, okay. So when I stayed after, you will not believe what happened next. Come back for part two. So I stayed after because she told me I was lacking some skills. So we started practicing and then she gave me a lollipop as a reward. She told me that I was the best student and that I was beautiful. I smiled because I felt good about myself. She said let's go into her office because she wanted to show me something cool and I agreed. So she sat me down in her chair and looked up a website. This website was PH and she looked up two girls doing stuff. Then the video played and it was girls kissing at first, then they started doing inappropriate things. She then paused it and told me to come here and to sit on her lap. I didn't want to, but I couldn't say no because she was my coach. So I sat down. Then she tried to kiss me and I got up and ran away. She shouted for me to come back, but I knew this was wrong. My mom asked me what was wrong and I told her everything. My mom said she was going to bring her to court to settle this and I said okay. So we ended up talking to the police and scheduling a date to put her on trial. So we went to the courthouse and I saw her. I got anxious and looked away. I was scared for some reason, but that was probably my intuition warning me. So it was at the part saying whether she was guilty or not, and you will not believe what they said. Come back for part two. So I saw her in court and looked away because I was scared. So at the part when the judge declared whether she was guilty or not, she was not guilty. This my mom started to yell and I was super upset about it as well. I started to cry. Then when we walked out, we looked at each other and I just walked away. I knew she was staring at me. So I went back to practice in spite of everything happening. Think about what you want and it could be anything. Like money, love, anything. And you go to the area and the item's supposed to be there. So back to the story now. So I had a group of four people excluding me. Their names were Tyra, Juliet, Emily, and Fleur. I've been friends with them since fourth grade and we all got along well. So we got our idea from TikTok. My friends got interested and decided to get involved with it. I was kind of sketched out with the idea and so was Tara, but Emily, Juliet, and Flora wanted to do it. So we decided to. Flora picked us up in the car and we downloaded the app on my phone. So to make it more exciting, we decided to manifest things confidentially. So we finished the first time and I generated a location. We finished our drive there and it was a for whatever reason said we should follow it. I told him we shouldn't, but he didn't listen to me. Tara didn't like the idea either. So we followed the smell and we ended up walking to this trash can and it had flies around it this definitely gave me the creeps Juliet ended up lifting the trash can top and we saw a large bone and a human hand the rest was mush we all screamed and ran away we drove away and never looked back we didn't call the cops either because we didn't want to get involved follow for more story times and follow my Instagram as well
My ex-best friend and her sister did it with their dogs. So it was my freshman year and I met these two girls, Cassidy and Samantha. Cassidy was skinny, had dark brown hair and eyes, and she was super pale with rosy cheeks and lips. Think of a porcelain doll. Samantha was skinny with a little bit of thickness. She had short hair up to her shoulders that was light brown and her eyes were hazel. Her skin tone was a peachy color. All three of us had the same class and we were grouped up. They introduced themselves to me and were kind of magnetic. They were sweet and uppity. Most people in school liked them, so they were pretty popular. So we didn't have enough time in class, so they invited me over to their house to study. When I went, their parents weren't home. I noticed they had two dog bowls and I asked if they had dogs. They said yeah and I asked them where they were and they said they were somewhere. Then we go to Samantha's room and do the project. Then we took a break and they told me to make myself at home, which I did. Then Samantha had to leave the room midway. She said she had business to attend to and winked at Cassidy. Five minutes later, I had to use the restroom. She told me it's down the hall two doors to the right. So I went, but I accidentally went one door to the right. So I heard weird noises and I saw the door slightly open. You will not believe what happened next. Come back for part two. So I heard weird moist noises coming from the room, so I looked in and saw Samantha getting her kitty eaten by the dog. Not their pet cat, I'm talking about hers. I was grossed out and then found the bathroom. I went back to Cassidy's room and said I had to go back home. Cassidy questioned why and I said my mom needed me to babysit my sister. She said she wanted to hang out with me to get to know me better and I said okay. I left the house and felt bad for lying and making up a sister, but I just felt gross and didn't know how to go about it. So a week later, me and Cassidy hung out at the mall. Me and her had an amazing time. We ended up doing everything together and we soon became best friends. Samantha always tried to hang with with us but i didn't because i found her a weirdo and cassidy even agreed so one day she invited me to a sleepover so we watched a movie and had so much fun and then i got tired i asked her if it was okay if i went to sleep and she told me that it was fine i was so excited because i knew i would be friends with this girl forever so i fell asleep and then i woke up to use the bathroom and cassidy was gone so i looked around and samantha wasn't upstairs either i heard the same weird noises from before coming from downstairs so i followed the noise and it led to their basement i heard loud clapping and slight moaning too you will not believe what happened next come back for part three so i heard moaning and slurping noises <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> I went downstairs and peeked through the wall. They couldn't see me though since they were face back towards me. One of them was literally hooking up with their dog and the other was getting their kitty licked. Samantha and Cassidy were both performing bestiality. This is sexual abuse, mind you, since animals, like dogs in this example, can't give consent. I decided to record to show my other bestie, Caroline, since she wouldn't have believed me. I almost puked while recording it. I ran back upstairs, packed all of my stuff, and left. Cassidy tried to FaceTime me five times, but I blocked her and Samantha's number after she did that. I called Caroline and told her everything that happened. I sent the video and we both laughed and thought this was disgusting. So the next day at school, Cassidy and Samantha weren't there. A friend of mine asked me if I've seen the video. I said, what video? It turns out Caroline forwarded it to majority of the school and now everyone knows they did stuff with their dogs. They never contacted me or went back to the school ever again. Don't do nasty shit with your dogs. Please. Thanks. Follow for more story times and follow my Instagram as well. I was pregnant with my brother's baby and didn't know. So I was 16 years old back then. Keep in mind, I wasn't educated as I was now. When I was younger, I always felt like there was some missing part of me. I don't know why, but I just did. I always dreamed of having a twin brother or at least another sibling, but it just never occurred to me. So I asked my mom one day if I could have a sibling, and she said no and freaked out on me for absolutely no reason. I ended up crying. I was five, mind you. She came back and apologized, but I never forgot about that conversation. So years passed, and one day this new kid transferred to my school. His name was Michael. Me and him made eye contact, and it felt like I was looking into a mirror. I talked to him and said we looked like siblings, and we both laughed. I asked him what his parents looked like. He showed me, and his mom was a redhead, and his dad had brown hair like him and green eyes. He looked like his parents, so my suspicions went away. Me and him became friends, then best friends, from the course of freshman year to sophomore year. Everyone thought we were siblings. We laughed at the idea, but never officially said if we did or not. So one day, we were at a friend's party and we decided to play spin the bottle. He spinned it and it pointed at me, so we had to go into the closet and kiss. You will not believe what happened next. Come back for part two.
opened the bottle and it landed on me. We both laughed and said we would be quick. So we went into the closet and looked at each other and laughed. We kissed and I felt a spark, like when you like someone. Then I kissed them again and then we stopped and just stared at each other. The timer went off and we came out. They asked how it was and we just said it was a peck. The friendship became weird after that. I would get jealous if he was around any other girls and he would make it obvious that he did if I was around any other guys. I suggested that we have a talk because this was getting weird. We both said how we felt and we came up with the conclusion that we liked each other and we started dating. Everyone shipped us at school. We dated for five months and then took our relationship to another level. We decided we were ready for intercourse and did our thing. We used protection of course, nothing crazy. So one day out of nowhere I started feeling nauseous and got word cravings. I told him how I was feeling and how bad it was. He thought I might have been pregnant. So we got a pregnancy test and was positive. We freaked out because we did it with a condom for the first time. We wanted to keep it because I was pro-life and we thought we were so in love, so we obviously had to tell our parents. So we set a date to meet both of our parents and say that we were pregnant. And you will not believe what happened next. Come back for part three. We did it first with Michael's parents and they were pretty accepting. They said they helped financially, but I would have to drop out of school and I had no issue with it. So next was my mom. And I was nervous, but I wanted to do it. So as soon as I got to the front door, my mom opened the door and looked shocked. She then looked mad, dragged me in by the arm and slammed the door. She yelled and questioned why I was with him. And I said that he was my boyfriend. My mom said I couldn't date him anymore. I questioned her and she wouldn't budge. So I told her I was pregnant right then and there. I thought maybe she'd tell me why. She looked at me in shock and broke down in front of me. I asked her what was wrong and she said that it was my brother. She said she gave him away long ago when I was born because she couldn't afford the both of us and named him Michael. She told me I had to have an abortion because the baby would become deformed. And if I didn't, she'd kick me out of the house. I cried and cried. One day, she took me out of school and brought me to Planned Parenthood. She forced me to have an abortion. I was so heartbroken. I told Michael we are brother and sister and we broke up but are still friends. We'll tell his parents we are related after we finish high school. Follow for more story times and follow my Instagram as well. Click the link in my bio for $50 for Roblox. My boyfriend tried to pimp me out in Las Vegas. So I used to date this guy, let's call him Nathan. I met him on Yubo. If you don't know what Yubo is, it's kind of like Tinder, you know, with the whole swiping method, but for making friends instead. And people of all ages could go on there. I thought he was cute. He owned a Tesla at 17, so he was rich as well. So I swiped on him. He immediately fronted me back and we started talking and flirting. Our chemistry was so great, we decided to meet up. He lived in LA and I lived in New York City, but I didn't have any money. He offered to pay for my trip back and forth. I didn't trust him fully, so I told him to cash out me the amount for a ticket back and forth. Not a round trip because I wanted to leave in case something went bad. He ended up sending me 10k. I was so excited. I literally was going to go on a shopping spree there. Summer soon came and I went on the plane. I met him there and he was cute, but he was acting weird and there was two other guys with him. He told me I could just stay at his place instead of a hotel because that's for the last day and I agreed. The guys were gawking at me, examining me, and I think one of them took a picture of me. Everything was fine, but one night he told me to dress up for the club and you will not believe what happens next. Come back for part two. Tells me we have to go to the club. I've never been, but I decided to go anyway. I wore a cute red dress with some vibrant blue heels, curled my hair, and did my makeup. He was wearing a super nice outfit and wore a red pin that had a capital P on his tux. I asked him what it was for and he said he didn't know, he just found it cool. Then after that, we went to the club and I saw the guy letting us in wearing a P as well. We started dancing and everything was fine. Then some guys came around me with the P pin and started dancing with me too. Then my ex dragged me outside with a bunch of men. They all had the letter P on them as well. We went into a limo and went to a hotel. They came with us and then he literally looked at me and told me to strip. What? 
What do you mean strip? I asked and he was serious. I ran out of the room immediately. He chased after me and explained he needs to pay these guys back because that's how he gets his money. I told him he's insane for thinking he could use me for that. I went to a hotel for the night while I got a ticket for tomorrow. I went back home and blocked him on everything and never spoke to him again. I gave him the money because I want to know ties with him. Lesson learned, don't ever just meet people on Yubo. Follow for more story times and follow me on Instagram as well. Click the link in my bio for some Robux as well.